Yeah, I hear you. The audio is just a little bit choppy, right. but uh, we'll just talk slowly and hopefully that'll work fine. Okay. Well, thanks for the great talk. That was that was just kind of mind blowing. Actually, I'm looking forward to rewatching it probably two or three times. Um, <laughs> Who are, is this? Uh, this is Corwin again. Okay. okay. Um, so we, we do have a few questions uh, coming in. Yeah, um, I'm just you know, I'm going to answer them. Uh, Okay. Um, well, I can read them to you, and then we'll transcribe your answers if you'd like to answer them live. Um, oh, I see. Uh, that might be. Let me do that. <laughs> the 92 open card as the pantry. But yes, that uh, has been to depth, and people are putting all the perfect scores on. That. But that's that's not quite. The end. I mean, sometimes uh, it's question, it is. Ask, so you have to put on these. Oh, I. Oh. So, speaks lowest. Um, sometimes the research community goes too far during numbers and uh, reuses evaluations and uh, doesn't you know, improve, don't really transfer, transfer to uh, domains. But uh, there are richer and newer data that are available. And so there's always uh, uh, we are in the process, and I, I am only and a couple of my colleagues, we are getting new data so that you can actually make sure the learning model is better. Oh, shoot. And then I failed to unmute myself in the, <laughs> on the stream here. Okay. Uh, and I think you're you're answering in text right now one of these, so I'll just like let you uh, let you drive. Here. So please, do, uh, I'll, one thing I'll add is uh, please read the question that you're answering when you read out your answers. Um, what I see, yes. And we're we're showing the pad on the stream, so people are okay. are seeing the text, and that's that's probably a good approach considering we're having a little shakiness with the audio. In fact, um, I think my audio may be pretty stable, so I'll I'll just start reading out both the questions and the answers. Uh, okay. But Samir, if you wanna, you're welcome to interrupt me if you wanna expand on your remarks at all. So the first question was: Has the 92 UPenn uh, corpus of articles feat been reproduced over and over again using these tools? The answer was not quite. That was a sort of a first wave. The particular corpus was the first one that started a revolution, kind of. But there are more corpa being uh, made available. In fact, I spent about eight years, a decade ago, building a much larger corpus with more layers of information. And it is called the Onto Notes. It covers Chinese and Arabic, DARPA funded. This is freely available uh, for research. Uh, to anyone, anywhere. That was quite a feature, uh, quite a feat. The next question, uh, is this only for natural languages like Engl English or more general? Would this be used for programming languages? Samir said, I am using English as a use case, but the idea is to have it completely multilingual. I cannot think why you would want to use it for programming languages. In fact, the AST in programming languages is sort of what we are trying to build upon, uh, what we are trying to build upon. So that one can capture the abstract representation and help the models learn better. 
these days, the models are trained on a boatload of data. And so they tend to be overfitted to the data. So if you have a smaller data set, which is not quite the same as the one that you had uh, the training data for, then the models really do poorly. It is sometimes compared to learning sine function using the points on the sine wave as opposed to deriving the function itself. You can get close, but then you cannot really do a lot. You cannot do a lot, really do a lot better with that model. This is sort of what is happening with the deep learning uh, hype. It is not to say that there hasn't been um, a significant advancement in the tech, in the technologies, but to say that the models can learn is an extremely, is an extreme overstatement. Awesome answer. I'm going to scroll my copy of the pad down just a little bit. And um, I'll, I'm going to, and we'll just take a moment to start looking at the next question. So I'll read that out. Reminds me of the advantages of pre computer copy and paste, cut up paper and rearrange, but having more stuff with your pieces. Right. Kind of like that, but more intelligent than copy paste, because you could have various local constraints that would ensure the information is consistent with the whole. I am also envisioning. Excuse me a moment. I am also envisioning this as a use case of hooks. And if you can have rich local dependencies, then you can be sure that as much as you can <laughs> that the information sig signal is not too corrupted. Have you used it on real life situations? No. I'm probably the only person who is doing this crazy thing. <laughs> It would be nice, or rather, I have a feeling that something like this, if worked upon for a while, uh, by many people, uh, by many, might lead to a really, really potent tool for the masses. I feel strongly about using I'm sorry, I feel strongly about giving such power to the users and be able to edit and share the data openly so that they are so that they are not stuck in some corporate vault somewhere. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> One thing at a time. Yeah, plus one for that as well. 
All right, and I'll read out the next question. Do you see this as a format for this type of annotation specifically, or something more general that can be used for interlinear glosses, lexicons, etc.? Absolutely. In fact, the project I mentioned, OneNotes, has multiple layers of annotation, one of them being the propositional structure, which it uses for a large lexicon that covers about 15K verbs, so 15,000 verbs and nouns. in all their arguments structures uh, that we have been seeing so far in the corpora. This is about a million prop, uh, propositions that have been released recently. We just recently celebrated a 20th birthday of the corpus. It is called the prop bank. There is an interesting history of the banks. It started with tree uh, bank, and then there was prop bank with a capital B. But then, when we were developing onto notes, which contains syntax, named entities, conference resolution, propositions, word sense, all in the same uh, whole. Hey, Cohen, sorry for the interruption. We have about oh, maybe, 5 minutes and 15 seconds oh, I until... Okay. Let me, I can add this or uh, stuff later. Uh... That sounds good. If you want to just read it out then, and I think that would be the most important thing, that people can hear your answers, and uh, I and the other volunteers will be going through and trying to transcribe this. So go for it. So, Samir, just to make sure, um, did you uh, have something to say right now? Uh, oh, okay. I I think there are all questions, and uh, there is a lot, that, <laughs> and uh, clearly the the amount of time is not enough. But uh, I'm trying to figure out how you know to it have a community that which can uh, help such a, such a, one of the best, uh, one of the things that I'm imagining that this could make possible is to take all of the spread, uh, disparate resources that have uh, inconsistent or in, uh, not quite comparable um, uh, additions on them and which are right now just idle data, small, small island data floating in the like, you know, uh, but representation, representation, quickly, them all sort of together, and then they could be much more rich, full, and consistent, and sort of uh, would, like you said, you know, one, uh, one of you were asking about balance and the sort of the subcorpora uh, that have um, um, sentiment and information. Uh, I am, uh, yeah, there's a lot of various common people. The way it could be used by common people is to potentially make them available that uh, that currently doesn't recognize the current models on do and uh, so that more people can use the data and uh, not be best uh, towards one or the other. So far, uh, and there are some, some things when people train these models using huge amount of data, no matter how big the data is, it is a small cross section of the universe of data. 
and depending on what drop select will do your model, those will be missed against for those. And and some people will be interested in using the model for X, but somebody else might want to use the purpose Y. Um, and if the data is not in, then it's hard to do that. OK, so I think we've got just about uh, 100 seconds left. So if you have any closing remarks you want to share, and then we'll start transitioning. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate uh, uh, this was uh, uh, experience, frankly. I've uh, heard a complete uh, uh, pre recorded and, and uh, level of talk before, I guess. In a way, it was for a different audience. Um, it was extremely uh, useful, and I learned that early um, planning sort of try and uh, community that could make, take sure. this some. Right. Thank, thank, you, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Colin, I'll, I'll take it over. We are okay. we are moving. We are going to move to the next talk. Thank you so much, Samia, and sorry for the technical difficulty. Uh, as Colin said, we will try to manage as much of the information that was shared during this Q and A. We will file everything away where we can use it. We can use it and you know make captions and all this. So don't worry about the difficulty. And for now, we are going to move to the next talk in about one minute. Samia, one last time, thank you so much, and thank we'll be getting the next talk soon. Okay. Okay. Bye, bye, Samia. Yeah.